Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. And this isn't one of my regular shop videos, but I'm going to discuss these two different uh, old engines here. And they're, I call them hit and miss engines, but of course they're throttle governed engines. And they're essentially the same kind of engine. They're a International Harvester McCormick Deering uh, one and a half horse Model M probably from the late 20s and you've seen these in other videos and the purpose of this video is to discuss the magnetos on them and this one has been in several of my uh, videos over the years and uh, you saw me mount this magneto on there but I'm going back to a different type of magneto today but let me run these engines real briefly discuss them just a little bit with you and uh, explain how I'm going to replace the magneto. Now normally they use an EK type of magneto like the one on this engine. This is the engine that, that almost appeared on the picker show but it ended up on the cutting room floor and you saw nothing about this other than uh, in the rolling credits I got a little bit of, uh, of a plug for uh, my name but they had it spelled wrong. But when I bought this 10 or more years ago, the magneto was missing. The EK Wico, Wico uh, magneto, which belongs right here, was missing. And that's typical of when you buy these old engines because the magnetos were either removed because they didn't work and they never got uh, replaced on the machine or somebody bought the magneto only because there is a scarcity of good ones that, that uh, operate. So in uh, this video, if you watch it, or you can go back and watch it if you want, that's the title of it. I showed you how I installed this uh, magneto back here, chain driven. And it really, it works just fine, but somebody, Steve, uh, was watching this and thought, well, there's a better way of doing it, so I'm going to show you how to uh, put another kind of magneto on there, or a magneto replacement. and and uh, get rid of this. This is a Fairbanks Morse magneto that came off of a single cylinder Wisconsin engine and I've got that uh, chain driven and I tell you what it took me two days to make that little sprocket it's a split piece and that was no easy job so I'm very hesitant to take it off but of course the safety Nazis have criticized that no end because I have a chain guard just down here but that's not really my worry and uh, here's the on and off switch and most of the engines do not have an on and off switch so that's a pretty handy feature right there but essentially I'm going to disable this one I'm probably going to leave it on there and just take the wire off of it later on in this video now let's look at the other engine there's always somebody that asks me, uh, what's the purpose of these old engines anyway? Well, there were a lot of purposes on a farm. They could be belted, and you saw the pulley on the other side, and these engines, in fact, have different size uh, belt pulleys on them. But they could be used for anything from uh, running a washing machine, this was before they had electricity, or uh, grinding grain, or pumping water, or ju just about anything that needed uh, power. So. Uh, this is one and a half horse, and so is this. So look at the, and, and this is an old engine here, brought from the 50s off of an Eclipse Moor. It's a one and a half horse, I believe, Briggs and Stratton. But look at the difference in size. And these engines, of course, are water cooled, not air cooled. There's the water hopper that would get filled with uh, water. And I'm not really going to discuss the operation of these engines other than the magneto. You can look at some of the other videos if you're interested in that because I do have oh, four, four engines here of the type, of this type. And this is the Wickle EK magneto and it works just fine on this machine. They're brass and uh, they are not a reciprocating magneto or a, a rotary magneto they're reciprocating you can change the timing right here when you start it and i have to laugh here because we got the safety nazis in force as usual but in order to turn this engine off can you see the the stop button here 
and if you wanted to turn it off you simply put your hand when this is running between the flywheel and push that button. How's that OSHA? These engines can be started with a crank but the safer way to do it is to spin the flywheel. And that's how they run, and that's with the EK Magneto. Wico. Wico. Now let me run this one, if I can get it started. I know I didn't have the oiler on, but it was only running momentarily. But now I'm getting to the real essence of this video and what I wanted to talk about, and that is this uh, Wickle Magneto replacement. And this was sent to me a few months ago, and I was waiting for the weather to warm up so I could get out here and work, but it was sent to me by Steve Rogers out of Iowa, and I have uh, corresponded with him a bit, but he came up with this uh, concept, this idea of a EK replacement. And that's exactly what this is. And it's not really a magneto, but it's a spark producer, a spark box, and it has to be used in conjunction with a battery. And I'm typically going to use a six volt uh, lantern battery. So what I'm going to do now is to install this and this is called, again, a spark box. And he's got a website there and all of that. So check this out if you're interested, if you have one of these engines. And he also recommends these as a spare. If you go to an engine show and if you're having trouble with your magneto, it would be nice to have one of these uh, in, in your truck. And it came with a complete set of... Uh, instructions called the owner's manual here. It'll talk about safety. Again the address, phone number and all of that. So I've already read through this and I'm going to go ahead and install it. Just a quick safety note here. These cranks are a rather cantankerous things, so be very careful if you're using a crank to start your hit and miss engine because if these kick back and uh, I know a man who was starting about a, a six horse recently, he had his son starting it because his son was younger and stronger and this thing kicked back and it hit him in the lip and it loosened a couple teeth and he had to go to the doctor so get it all stitched up. So be careful with these. Uh, you're better off starting them in the manner that I showed you. Now looking at this uh, spark box, you can see that it mounts simply on the mount that's already on the machine, on the engine. And there's a stud here and then there's a bolt and that's all there is to it. And then this uh, pin, this little bracket clevis here also mounts. And then this goes to the spark plug and he's got some reproduction wire on there. It's real good looking. And then these are the battery uh, terminals. We've got a negative and a 
and a positive. So let's put that on and see if I can get it to work. Note that on the flywheel it's cast in ignition with a little mark and exhaust with a little mark. But this of course is the bracket for the magneto. And if you look down here, this little lever here has two positions. And in the top position, it's start. And once you get it running, you push it down. And that's the run position. I don't normally use that, but if you're having a little trouble, uh, that will retard the spark and then allow you to get the thing started. Now it looks like I'm going to have to run a tap in that hole. And it looks like a 5, 16, 18. I don't believe there's been a bolt in there since Columbus discovered America. Well, I was mistaken. That's not a threaded hole. It's a clearance hole. And the bolt goes in from the back. So we'll take the spark box. Put the bolt in from the back side. Now if you're taking a regular magneto out of there, make sure that uh, when you reinstall it, you don't put a bolt that's too long that goes all the way in and then interferes with uh, the mechanism. You could damage it. And then I'm going to snug up this bolt. And it's, this spark box is a pretty looking product that, other than the color, really simulates a EK Magneto, so that's, that's rather nice looking. And then I'll route the spark plug wire right on over and onto the spark plug. Right down here now, below the Magneto, where it uh, is, is actuated, I have to line up this little hole in the clevis with the slot in the cast iron uh, actuating arm. I'm just making up some of these names, but there is a little bushing or a roller that has to be installed and then the pin and the cutter key. That's going to be a fumbling uh, fiasco, so I'm going to do that off camera. Well, that wasn't so bad. Uh, I put a couple drops of oil on the pin and I got the cutterman key in. Now watch the, uh, if you can, the movement of that as the flywheel comes around. You see that moving up and down? Now that clicking you hear is the uh, impulse mechanism on the uh, Fairbanks Morse magneto. Now I got to see if I can find a battery and we'll Try this out. You know what? I really like this switch that Steve put on there. It's so much safer than the position of it on the old uh, Wicko Magneto, the grounding mechanism. But I'm going to put the battery down here temporarily. Now, you know what is strange to me is that you can buy this whole lantern, LED. Now, why isn't that coming on? At Home Depot, I think the whole thing was four dollars, but and that's an ever ready. But if you want to buy just the battery, I think it costs more than that. Isn't that weird? Although I realize that this whole thing here is worth about fifteen cents, probably costs no more to make than a uh, milk jug. So for now, that's going to sit there. And if you remember, the outside terminal is uh, positive, the inside one is negative. Again, that's, uh, well, I don't know what that is. It's in French or something. Again, I'm offended. Doesn't take much to offend me. Have you noticed that? But when you get old, you get cantankerous and crabby, and you don't like nonsense, and you don't like political correctness or any of that. And, you know, many of you guys that watch this, agree with me. And I wish I could get, I do a lot of wishing too. 
I would much prefer batteries that had the screw-on terminals like the dry cells did when I was a boy. I'm going to turn the switch on and we'll go to the other end and check for spark. This is the new wire from the spark box. That's the old wire from the Fairbanks Morse. You know, in my recent video on uh, adjustable wrenches. I was shocked at how many people hate them. You know, there is a use for them, but some people just... I know you're not going to work on a BMW with one, but they still sure are handy around the shop, and that's why I got a hundred of them, but they are not meant to replace a good socket wrench or a good uh, box end wrench. Drop the washer. I took that out just so there's no compression. And I'm going to just use this homemade... Well. I had two of these. Where's the other one? That's a homemade uh, test plug. All right, watch the spark plug for spark as I crank it over. And uh, they pay no attention to that clicking again. That's the impulse. Looking good. Thank you, Steve. This may be of interest to some, but it's kind of irrelevant to most. But notice the ratio here on my Fairbanks Morse. This sprocket has the same number of teeth as this sprocket. I forgot what the number is. That's five or more years ago. But my point here is that I'm getting a spark every revolution of the crank and there's only a need for a spark every other revolution so I have a wasted spark. It's the next day I had to take a little break but I have to confess that I had a problem starting it with the spark box and I got it running fine now but the entire problem was that it was out of time and the reason it was out of time is remember there was no magneto on here for I don't know how long could have been 20, 30, 40, or 50 years, and the whole mechanism down here that times it, the end of my stick, and I'll show you a close up of that in a second, had uh, obviously vibrated away from the position that it, it should have been in. So what I'm going to do is show you how to time uh, an engine like this, but I'm going to use the, the modern invention of a timing light. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to time it, or how I timed it, with the other magneto. And I did this uh, years ago, but I'm going to repeat it now. And uh, before I start that, let's uh, take a note now that these engines are all marked on the flywheel with uh, an ignition mark. And now I put uh, some white paint on there to highlight it. Also, I put a zero mark right on the wooden base here. There is a mark farther back in on the cast iron base, but really that's just the, the, the vertical mark. Now there are directions on how to time it in the original uh, paperwork, and Steve sent this along to me. Ignition system, adjusting ignition, and so on, along with uh, this picture showing the various parts here of the uh, timing mechanism. I'm standing at the back of the engine now, and this Fairbanks Magneto, Fairbanks Morse Magneto, can be uh, pivoted like this. They are slotted, and you're going to find that on tractors and other devices where these are used. Uh, that's how you check the timing, or how, can adjust the timing, I should say. Now, I've put a little timing mark on here so I know where my baseline is, and that was all figured out by top dead center, and uh, the spark had to occur just a little bit before top dead center, and I did that years ago. But we used to uh, time our 54 Chevys by ear or feel, the same thing with the distributor, just rotating it until we found the sweet spot. We had no idea there was such a thing 
as a timing light. We had no idea there was such a thing as distributor wrenches. So everything was a crescent wrench and bagasse and bagasse. But you know what? Those blue flame sixes sure ran sweet. Now here's my setup. I've got the Craftsman timing light uh, aimed at the flywheel. And you can pick these in inductive type of timing lights up for a dollar at any garage sale. Nobody wants them or knows, the widow doesn't know what they are. So she's glad to get a dime for it if she can. Now the inductive pickup, see the wire? Runs clear onto the other side where that uh, magneto wire comes into the spark plug. So that's already hooked up. And this thing runs on 12 volts, so I got it uh, jumped off of my Cub Cadet. And you'll notice I also got the trigger locked on, so I'm going to get a continuous uh, flashing light. This is a strobe, of course. And hopefully I got it aimed just right. Now what I've discovered here in uh, practice, rehearsal, is that uh, you may not be able to see the strobe on the marks and that's very unfortunate but the reason for that is you know even though this is videotape there's a certain number of frames per second and because of the so-called wagon wheel effect it may not pick it up you may not be able to see on your monitor what I'm seeing here in my garage also as I start this up it may be too loud or noisy for you to hear me over the engine but let me open some doors and get some uh, air moving in here. I'll fire up the uh, engine and uh, we'll see what the results are. And what I'm going to do then, if you are able to see the timing marks, I'm going to be back here on the magneto, rotating it with my eyes uh, on the timing mark. And when I find uh, that it's timed correctly, then there are two lock screws on the magneto and I'll lock it permanently. Now that was already in position but I'm just redoing this so that you can uh, see how I did it and uh, hopefully understand this. Okay watch the light now if it shows up as I rotate the magneto. Okay, I turned the engine off. I don't know if that showed up or not. I sure hope that it did because I rotated it first and advanced the, advanced the spark a little bit and then I retarded it. Then I brought it back right onto the timing mark, which is right there, at which time I tightened down the magneto. So you get a general idea how it's done with a magneto. Now I'm going to do the same thing again with the spark box. Now nobody's going to have a magneto like that anyway, but it could be done that way with a, with a Wico, Wico uh, EK magneto or uh, the, the spark box. So now I'm going to hook the spark box up, uh, switch spark leads, uh, spark plug wires and all of that. Get back to you in a minute. In order to time uh, an EK magneto or the spark box, we have a, a rod here with a spring on it, and there's some lock nuts, and uh, I'm going to adjust it from the other end, and uh, re that, in the end, pulls the uh, magneto or spark box down vertically. And that's how it is tripped. It took considerable uh, tinkering uh, in setting the timing in order to get this to run with the spark uh, box because in fact it hadn't been run with a regular EK magneto in uh, who knows how many years 30 40 or 50 and I had been certainly running it the last few years with my uh, FM magneto and I think that the vibration and so on threw the adjustments off of this uh, rod, threaded rod here that has the two springs on it. I'm not sure what it's called but I had to make an adjustment there to get kind of a baseline timing in order to get it to run. 
I have the timing light hooked up and I'm going to just turn it over by hand and you'll see the uh, flashing here when the ignition comes around. But remember when those uh, when the ignition mark lines up with that base mark, remember that we're, we're going to get two sparks because uh, this unit sparks as the plunger is going back up, but that's a waste spark and uh, has not even to be considered, but you may notice that. And I'll just turn it over by hand and remember there will only be a spark every other uh, revolution because it's a four cycle engine. So there's one. And never mind that waste spark. Perhaps you can see the spark better with this type of uh, spark uh, indicator. Again, I'm cranking by hand. That's it, running on the spark box. Note the uh, inductive pickup there for the timing light. And now I'll turn it off using the switch. Now at this time, next time I go to start it, off camera of course, I will be able to use this uh, starting lever which retards the spark, makes it easier to start. I, that was inoperative or unaffected or uh, not in the system when I used the FM magneto. Be sure and use a freshly charged 6 volt battery. The first one that I used that I showed you as I was taking it out of the lantern was dated I think from 13 or 14 and it wasn't uh, what I wanted and I checked it with a fluke meter and it had only 5 point three volts so it, it wasn't getting the oomph. I did uh, run it off of a six volt uh, Cub Cadet type battery and that worked great. So, And make sure that you turn this off when you're done. Now I put the on and off on there. It's rather sloppy done with a paint marker that wasn't from the factory. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video about the spark box and magnetos. Some of you may put, put it to good use if you have one of these engines or may have found it interesting just for entertainment. This is Tubal Kane signing out saying so long for now.